Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted one of the new Primaris models from the Indomitus box. I painted the Primaris Captain and I just have to say I really really enjoyed it. He took a ton of time painting because he has got so many details on him but it was really really a lot of fun and I'm kind of starting really to think about actually getting a space marine army and um, not not right now because I have so so many projects and I want to get on with my orc army as well but uh, you know in time perhaps tiny tiny space marine army let's see first off I used a mix between the griff charger gray and the black templar both contrast paints as the undercoat for the black I think it gives it a nice dark undercoating, but not so dark that you won't be able to see the darker shadows when I place those. And for the darker shadows I'm just using the Black Templar. I could also have used just an ordinary black, but I thought this was easier to work with and was dark enough for it to be visible. I placed the darker highlights at the bottom of the shield where I think the sun would be least likely to hit it. Then I do the uh, lighter highlights. This is just a grey I mixed myself. I didn't really have one on hand, so I just mixed a bit of white and, uh, and black. And I'm placing the lighter highlights here at the top of the shield, so that uh, that's where you will have more light, probably. And then I used a pure white. This is the Army Painter Matte White for the last highlights. I'm not going all the way down with the white, because I wanted it to be... Uh, it's sort of an illusion of light and shadow still, even though this is by no means true non-metallic metal. For the gold trim I use the Citadel Color Retributor Armor. It's the gold I almost always use. I really really like the way it feels on the brush and I also like the sort of warm saturated look of it. To shade that I use the Cryptic Armor Shade, one of those new Necron paints. I use this instead of my beloved Citadel Chestnut Ink, because I think it almost gives it the same sort of feel. And this is way, way easier to get a hold of if you're going to be painting perhaps an entire army. To highlight that I again use the, um, the Retributor Armor. And I try to make sure that I do the lighter parts more at the top of the shield than at the bottom, but also just to give it a bit of color variation while painting. And then lastly, I highlight it with a bit of Stormhost Silver, just to make it look like the light is reflecting in the gold. I think this just gives it the last, last bit to really make it pop. For the red cloth, I use the contrast paint Flesh Tears Red. It's a relatively dark red color, which I like for this uh, project because I want to be able to highlight it up to a really nice yellow color in, at the end. Then I use some lighter colors for the highlights. I use both the Mephiston Red. I've already done that here, but it's just not visible on tape, so that's why you won't be seeing it. And then I do an orange highlight with the Vallejo's Orange Fire. I use really, really tiny cross, hatching, cross hatches here to make sure that it looks almost like cloth in itself. Um, I like this technique here. It, uh, it makes a lot of sense for me to use it on cloth, even though I'm, of course, also using it on the armor. The last bit of highlight I'd give it is with the uh, Citadel Flask It's Yellow. Next up, I start working on the sword, and I've decided to do a sort of simple, almost power sword looking um, design and I use the Apothecary White, the Griff Charger Grey and then the Pterodon Turquoise. Uh, all of them are contrast paints and I just use them to do a very quick um, superficial uh, wet blend here. I'm going to do more with it later so I'm not too careful about it being really really smooth all the way down. Um, of course, I try to get it as smooth as I can, but only within certain limits. I'm not going to be spending hours doing the sword here. And I just try to blend it as well as I can. And I really like the uh, color going all the way from the uh, grayish tones of the white to the pterodon turquoise. I think the pterodon turquoise makes a, a nice job of making it look a little bit more interesting than if I had just been using a darker gray, but without going overboard. Then I use the pure matte white from uh, Army Painter to highlight it. And then I use some of those cross hatchings again 
uh, to make sure that it blends in with the rest of the of the model uh, so that it doesn't stand out on its own with just a wet blend but actually is uh, made in the same style as the rest um, and I think that actually worked really well. Lastly I do a tiny tiny bit of uh, dark uh, black um, highlighting almost uh, just to make sure that the contrasts on this sword are very visible and easy to see. Next up I start working on the skeleton in front of the shield. I decided to paint it like it's an actual skeleton. I was uh, considering if I wanted just to go for a you know a gold skeleton or something but I decided that no you know what it's probably just an actual skeleton that he's got there. Then I gave it a quick dry brush of Wraithbone trying to make sure that I would catch the raged areas on top of the model so that it looks like it's the uh, light coming from above. And then a very careful dry brushing of pure white, again from uh, the Mad White Army Painter here. Lastly, I decided to do a bit of freehand on the tiny, tiny shield on his shoulder. And of course, I thought that it should be a skull. I mean, he doesn't have enough skulls on him. How many does he have? Like 15 or something? That's not nearly enough. So I decided to give him an extra one. I just uh, quickly drew an outline with the Sharpie and then filled it in with... Retributor armor. I decided to do a a golden skull instead of one in a more natural color, just to make sure that it did not stand out too much from the rest of the model. After that, I used the black Templar contrast paint to do the eyes, the nose, and then a black outline around the skull to make sure it stands out. Then I used the cryptic cryptic armor shade just to give him a bit of shaded looks in the, uh, underneath the eyes and on the forehead just to give some definition to the skull. And lastly, I used some Stormhost Silver to make some highlights, to make sure that he looks as 3D as I can make him, even though I have to say it's a bit difficult with such a tiny model. But I think it, uh, it, it worked out pretty well. I'm happy with it. And here you can see the finished results. Uh, as I said, I spent quite a lot of time painting this guy, upwards of about 20 or 30 hours, which is way too much for some, uh, for a model that's not even a, a character model or anything. But I had a lot of fun and I'm very pleased with the way he turned out. So uh, yeah, you'll probably be seeing more Space Marines here on this channel, uh, I think. Uh, but one of my next projects is definitely a burner bomber for the orcs. So I'm looking forward to going back to my orcs. I feel like I've been cheating on them a bit. So I hope you like this, uh, this model. If you have something you want to show off, you are more than welcome to join us on the Dyson Demon showroom on Facebook. I will leave a link to that in the show notes. This Monday, I was also featured on the podcast 40k Today. So if you want to listen to that, I suggest you go download the a podcast 40k today. It's a really, really cool podcast with lots of great news and interviews and all sorts of things. So check that out as well. So if you like this video, I hope you will consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.